All right, what's up guys? So today we are doing another in-depth lens comparison between the relatively new Sony 35mm f1.8 and the older Samyang 35mm f1.4, which I actually compared earlier to the more expensive Sony Zeiss lens earlier in the year. Now in Canada, both these lenses cost almost exactly the same with the Sony 35mm 1.8 coming in at $798 and the Samyang coming in at $720. But in the US, the price difference is actually a lot bigger with the Sony 35 coming in at $750 and the Samyang coming in at $480 US. Why it's so much less expensive Canada, I'm not sure, but I'm happy that it is because it's an awesome price for an awesome lens. Now comparing these two lenses on size and it's really obvious just how much smaller the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8 is than the Samyang lens. And the Sony 35 is actually the exact same size and diameter as the Sony Zeiss 55mm 1.8, which is really cool. Um, both are really tiny lenses. And while the extra heft from the Samyang is going to help you stabilize some handheld footage, in most cases, you know, the Sony is just gonna be a lot lighter on your camera, it's gonna balance better, and it's gonna fit in your bags much, much easier. Okay, on the Samyang, we have a 67 millimeter filter thread, which is a very common size for filters, so that's a big plus for this. On the Sony, on the other hand, we have a 55 millimeter filter thread, which is a little bit tough when it comes to filters. Personally, I buy 82 millimeter filters so that I can fit it across all of my lenses, and I just buy step-up rings to get from all the lenses to the 82 millimeter size. 55 is a really tough, size for me and I actually have to get two different step up rings to get from 55 to 82 which looks a little bit ridiculous but um, at least it's possible and you know for the small size it's a worthwhile trade-off. All right moving on to the rest of the body on the Samyang you'll find a very nice and clean finish on the body here with a manual focus ring accompanied by a red ring finish. Um, very nice very clean and very nice design on the Samyang. On the Sony, however, um, you know, nice all black finish on this. Material wise, um, seems a little bit lighter, a little bit like it's uh, made of some more plastic, but overall a really nice clean finish. Um, we have a nicely damped manual focus ring here, accompanied by a customizable button, as well as a manual focus switch, which is definitely really nice to have, especially on such a small and light lens. And the manual focus ring on this lens is actually a little bit special. Um, it actually has a very linear response to it, something that most fly-by-wire lenses don't have. This means that no matter how fast or how slow I turn this manual focus ring, it'll actually register the exact same output. Um, contrast this to the Samyang lens where if I turn the manual focus ring really slowly, it doesn't actually even register as an input. So this makes doing really slow, smooth focus pulls almost impossible. And even for zooming in and nailing critical focus on a still subject, um, it's a downright pain on the Samyang and almost impossible in some situations. So huge win for the Sony with a linear response. I hope this you know, carries over to all of Sony lenses from now on. Um, very, very cool feature. But let's move on to autofocus where I'm sure you'd assume the Sony 35mm 1.8 lens to focus a lot faster due to its smaller elements. And you'd be right. So focusing point to point in photo mode, you can see the 1.8 lens focusing a lot faster than the 1.4 lens. Switch to video though, and you'll actually see this Samyang lens be able to focus between the two subjects a lot faster. This is probably a software related thing though, as you can see the Sony try to hold onto subjects a lot longer before switching and having a smoother and slower focus pull between the subjects. My next test put both lenses on a motorized slider and had it slowly push in and away from a subject. And here you can see the Sony really pull away from the Samyang in terms of autofocus ability. The Sony completely holds onto the subject as it pushes in and away from the subject, whereas the Samyang, you can see it stutter all over the place. Next, I used eye autofocus on both lenses to take some portraits of Lex and Isla at the park, and both lenses absolutely nailed it. Um, I don't think I have a missed shot 
from all the photos that I took, um, basically just bursting away, eye autofocus, and yeah, both lenses just killed it. So in photo mode, you know, honestly, you're not gonna see too much difference between the two. The Sony will be a little bit faster at kind of fast action and acquiring focus, but in terms of accuracy, both lenses are pretty damn near perfect. And lastly, I had Lexan Isla run right towards the camera as I held down the shutter and burst at high speed. And you can see the Sony does absolutely perfectly, so it does not miss a single frame, where the Samyang only misses when Lex and Isla get really close to the camera. I should also point out that the Samyang actually makes a little bit of noise as it autofocuses. You can hear it click and whir inside the body, whereas the Sony is completely silent. So, big win for the Sony. Um, the Samyang is quite a bit closer than I thought it would be, but the Sony does pull ahead in the autofocus department. Okay, next up we're testing flares with both these lenses and straight away you're gonna see a huge red flare from the Samyang lens where the Sony is quite a bit more subdued with kind of bluer dots throughout the frame. Um, stopping down, you're gonna see that red flare become a big red ring, um, especially as the light element goes right into the center of the frame. Um, it does produce a very noticeable and distracting red ring around your image, whereas the Sony, again, remains quite subdued. In a real world scenario like this portrait of Lex, again, you see the Sony doesn't really have a lot of flaring. And if you do, it's gonna be a subtle color and a very kind of subdued shape. Whereas the Samyang is gonna have a larger blob, a more colorful blob and a more distracting appearance, sometimes discoloring hair or articles of clothing and just being you know, a little bit harder to deal with. Next, we're gonna get right into bokeh and honestly, both these lenses do really well when it comes to bokeh. Um, the Samyang with its 1.4 aperture is gonna win in terms of size, um, size of the highlights, size of the, size of the bokeh balls, but honestly, the Sony 1.8 really has a nice soft look to the backgrounds and just looks really smooth overall. But we're gonna jump onto the computer next and we're gonna look at some images side by side. All right, so here we are on the computer and right away, we're gonna compare two portraits of Lex, um, both taken in the same settings. Just one at 1.4 with the Samyang, one at 1.8 with the Sony. And if we zoom into these images, you can actually notice that the Samyang looks quite a bit softer, quite a bit smoother, and it's just doing a better job at reducing detail in the background, which is what you want when you're taking a nice portrait. You wanna blur out this background and have a really nice look to the image. Um, you can especially see in the trees here, the Sony's looking really busy here with quite a bit of detail in the background, and the Samyang's doing a better job at blurring that all away. Um, same thing with the trees here looking quite distracting and the Samyang looking quite a bit better. And in our next example, we have the Samyang here on the right, the Sony here on the left. And once again, you're gonna notice the Samyang's looking quite a bit softer, quite a bit smoother in the background and it's just doing a better job overall at removing any distractions and just giving a nicer look to the image. Um, it's a little bit more magical, a little bit more blurred. Um, has a nice vignette to it, um, just looking really nice overall. So in these kind of close-up portraits, the Samyang, honestly, it does a really good job. It looks awesome, and I would say it does a better job at blurring out the background than the Sony. But let's look at another example. We have the Samyang here on the left this time, the Sony here on the right. Um, you can always tell the Samyang is always gonna be red, the Sony is always gonna be blue. Um, if we zoom into the background here during this running test, um, you actually notice that the Samyang has a really harsh look to the grass here in the background, whereas the Sony has a lot smoother of a look. But in general, and obviously, you know, the portraits look great on the Samyang in that particular distance to the subject and in that particular background and lighting situation. But in general, I would say the Sony has more soft backgrounds than the Samyang. The Samyang, again, has that bubbly look and in most cases will give that kind of harsh texture to the backgrounds, whereas the Sony is gonna be smoother. Okay, moving right along, and we're gonna to go to the big one, which is aberrations. This is like the hardest thing to test and also the most annoying of all the lens flaws that a lens can exhibit. So the more a lens can remove aberrations from the image, the better. I can't even count how many hours I've spent inside of Capture One and Photoshop trying to remove fringing and other types of aberrations. So if a lens can remove aberrations in camera, you know, it's a huge, huge win for me. All right, so we're gonna start with this extreme backlight test where I tried to simulate kind of like a window situation um, with a very high detail uh, subject in the foreground, just trying to produce as much aberrations as I possibly can 
And yeah, I would say the situation actually uh, did a very good job. So you'll have the Samyang on the left, the Sony on the right. And if we zoom in to 100%, um, both lenses doing a pretty good job with reducing kind of the red and purple aberrations in the front. The Sony you're gonna see a little bit more than the Samyang, but I would say the Samyang has a little bit more green in the background than the Sony um, up here on the background railing. Um, if we move up the image, we're actually gonna see a huge amount of purple here on the Sony and way less aberrations here on the Samyang, but again, a lot more green in the background. If we move over to the right side of the image though, um, you're still seeing a lot of purple on the Sony, uh, but I would say the Sony, you know, is looking a little bit better on the right side and the Samyang is looking quite blurry and um, just, I don't, I, I think this is coma, this kind of like winged highlights here, I believe is coma. And you're seeing a lot of that over here on the right side for the Samyang. So overall, I'd say both these lenses look pretty similar, um, where one lens does really bad in one situation, another part of the image, um, it looks quite a bit better than the other lens. So I would say overall, they are kind of dead even when it comes to aberrations. By 2.8, um, you're gonna see both lenses clear up quite a bit, so a lot less green in the background. Virtually no purple in the foreground. Um, and yeah, both lenses looking really good. I should note, um, the Samyang is always gonna have kind of a reddish tint to the foreground and a more of a cyan to the background, while the Sony is a more traditional purple and green. Um, just something to note, I find the software normally does a little bit better with reducing purple fringing rather than red fringing. Um, especially because, you know, skin is red, lips are red, and when you kind of reduce those aberrations, sometimes it takes the color out of the skin. So it's always better if a lens can have purple aberrations, that way um, the software can detect and remove it a lot better. But in a more real world situation, so again, looking at these portraits side by side, um, we're gonna see definitely more purple fringing on the Sony image here on the right. Um, these high contrast areas in her hair. Um, yeah, definitely seeing a lot of purple. On the Samyang image though, we're gonna notice a lot of coma and a lot of these kind of weird blurred out highlights um, that kind of don't look so great. So you're getting less color, but you're getting these kind of weird artifacts um, that I believe is coma. And yeah, that's definitely not great. As annoying as it is, um, purple fringing can be removed in software and things like coma can't. So I would say the Sony is definitely doing better here because at least I can fix the issues that are going on with the image. And lastly, we're gonna move on to this running test. And I just wanna point out this bridge in the background where you can see quite a bit of aberrations on the bridge um, from the Samyang image here on the left and a little bit cleaner of an image here on the right. Um, even looking at Lex, um, it's pretty subtle, but you can see kind of purpling and red fringing on her hair, um, a little bit on her clothes here, where the Sony's doing a little bit better of a job controlling all of that. Um, but yeah, just overall, cleaner images wide open from the Sony. I would say the Sony is doing a better job controlling everything and the aberrations that it does exhibit, at least you can fix it in software. Okay, next I wanna talk about sharpness with both these lenses and I'm gonna keep this portion pretty short because just flat out the Sony is sharper. Um, wide open in this portrait test, um, the Sony is just quite a bit sharper. You can see way more detail in the eyelashes. It does a better job kind of keeping that contrast and the bite to the image. Um, better intact with the Samyang's so looking a little bit softer. Um, here in the running test in a similar way, um, you're just gonna see way more kind of contrast and sharpness from the Sony. It just has way more kind of detail. Like you can just notice more detail coming out of the Sony image than you can with the Samyang. And when shooting landscapes, um, such as this one here, wide open, you know, you're just getting a lot more sharpness. The Sony is actually really sharp in this landscape test. It's really impressive. Um, in the middle here on the crane, way more detail. Moving over to the edges and you can see that just the detail holds up way, way better on the Sony lens than the Samyang. And here we are at F8 just to show you kind of sharpness stop down and I think you'd still agree that the Sony is looking still sharper although the Samyang has caught up in this middle portion. Uh, moving over to the right side here, I would say the Sony is still sharper and 
you can see here in the corners, just overall pretty sharp for both lenses, but the Sony is gonna give you that better sharpness across the aperture range in this landscape test. Okay, so my last test is a bit of a combination of all the previous tests and um, I set up three subjects at close, medium, and far distances, trying to test sharpness, bokeh, and um, lighting it to try to produce aberrations as well. And just really trying to put the lenses to the test. I'm trying to figure out where they fall apart, um, where they excel, and how they stack up to each other. So starting at minimum focus for both lenses, wide open at 1.8, and you can notice that the Sony here on the left focuses a lot closer than the Samyang does. Um, zooming in as well, you can see the Sony just performing really well at its minimum focus distance, even at 1.8, which is really impressive. Um, I think that is due to the floating elements inside of the Sony lens. Um, if you have the lens off, you can kind of notice it clicking around in there. Um, that is a floating element, so once you turn the camera on, it stabilizes and kind of locks in place, but while it's off, you can hear it clicking around. Um, but that is probably the reason why it does so well with close-up performance. Um, the Samyang, you're just gonna notice a lot of blurry images, um, a lot of chromatic aberration in the background, and just doesn't have the same amount of detail at all. Stop down to f2.8 though, and these lenses are starting to look pretty similar. Um, the Samyang's definitely cleaning up quite a bit. Doesn't quite have the same amount of contrast and detail that the Sony does, but the Sony um, exhibiting a little bit more aberrations than the Samyang. If we stop down to f4, um, we actually see the Samyang catch up and actually surpass the Sony, in my opinion, in terms of image quality. Uh, from here, f4 all the way up to you know f11, f16, I would say the Samyang does look cleaner than the Sony. However, I think if the subjects were at the exact same distance and the Sony wasn't at minimum focus, I would say the Sony is going to look cleaner across the aperture range than the Samyang. In terms of bokeh though, um, I would say the Sony has more circular highlights for sure. So you're gonna see more of a straight edged, uh, non-agonal shape from the Samyang, whereas the Sony does a better job keeping things looking circular. Um, it's also just reducing um, elements in the background a little bit better. So uh, here at 5.6, um, I would say the Sony is just doing a better job at keeping the bokeh looking circular and keeping it really just nice and soft. Okay, moving on to the medium distance. And if we zoom in here, the Sony here on the left is looking quite a bit sharper. Um, it's also free of aberrations, maybe a little bit here on the side, but the Samyang has a huge red highlight right there on the lens, which is not great. Um, if we move over here, we're also gonna see more aberrations here on the Samyang lens than the Sony. And if we look for bokeh, um, I would say the Sony is doing a better job at having circular highlights. It's having a little bit less aberrations, although this kind of yellow color is a little bit strange, but I'd say overall, the Sony is just looking quite a bit nicer at this medium distance. Okay, so now we are once again wide open looking at the far subject, and here the Sony just really looks way sharper um, in every sense of the word, I may have missed focus on the Samyang because of the manual focus ring that I mentioned earlier. It's really hard to get critical focus because it doesn't register super small movements. And autofocus at 1.4, of course, can miss at a subject that small in the distance. So I could have missed focus on it, um, but overall, you know, the Sony just looking really clean and really sharp. If we move over here to the upper right corner, once again, you're gonna see a lot of fringing and a lot of coma, um, which doesn't look good on either lens. Once again, the Sony looking really purple, the Samyang looking really red. And if we go to f2.8, we're gonna see the Samyang have a bit of a sharp edged bokeh ball here where the Sony is completely round. Um, that coma is almost completely eliminated and the uh, fringing is almost gone as well. And if we go into the subjects, the Samyang looking a lot sharper now, but the Sony just looking 
and once again, sharper overall. All right, guys, it's time for a conclusion. And while I talk, I'm just gonna throw up some images that I took from both these lenses used out in the real world for weddings, events, and things like that. So I'm just gonna pop those up as I talk about these lenses. Honestly, both these lenses are absolutely fantastic options for Sony shooters. And that sub $500 price point for the Samyang is really tough to beat in the US. In Canada though, I feel like it's a bit of a no-brainer to go with the Sony lens um, because of this similar price point. But let's summarize up all the points that I made so far and just come up with a final conclusion. In terms of sharpness, um, the Sony just absolutely kills it. Um, in pretty much every test, the Sony is gonna have a sharper image, especially wide open. And as you stop down through the aperture range, the Sony continues to get sharper and sharper, leaving the Samyang behind in I would say 95% of the images that I take. When it comes to autofocus, the Sony is gonna win again. Um, lighter, smaller components focus a lot faster. In video, it's completely silent and it's just a lot more sure of itself. Whereas the Samyang, while it does really well, especially for a third-party lens, um, it just kind of has some stutters, it has some hiccups, and in video, it's just not as confident and smooth at autofocusing. So another big win for the Sony. Next up is Bokeh, and this is where the Samyang makes a bit of a case for itself. Um, the images have a really nice ethereal look to them. The bokeh in the background, really big and kind of has a bubbly appearance, which some people may not like. But in some cases, you know, it makes for a really kind of magical look to the image. Um, the Sony, on the other hand, has in most cases, softer and smoother backgrounds. Um, but sometimes that Samyang just really kind of adds that extra magic to the image. So it really is up to you. I would say in most cases, again, the Sony is going to win it. But if you really like taking up close portraits with a 35 millimeter lens with a kind of magical looking background, um, definitely go for the Samyang. And finally, aberrations where I think the Sony overall has a much cleaner image. Yes, it has a lot of purple fringing and that can be a pain to deal with in post, but at least it can be corrected where with the coma and some of the weirder astigmatism issues with the Samyang lens, um, you can't really deal with that and you can't really fix it in post. So I would say overall, the Sony is gonna win it with aberrations as well. Um, just having that cleaner image and in a lot of cases, just reducing haze, reducing coma, reducing all those problems that you normally see with wide open 1.8 lenses. And yeah, it does really great in most situations. I wish it reduces those purple fringing a little bit more, but for the price, again, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. So I think it's pretty clear that the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8 is the winner in my tests an absolutely killer lens that pairs perfectly with the Sony a7 III. From shooting weddings to just taking it out on family outings, um, from shooting photos to throwing it on for a vlog, um, this lens just is awesome and it's gonna be a main staple in our bag for years to come. All right, if you guys made it all the way through, thank you so, so much for watching. I know these reviews are quite long and in depth, but I just really hope you guys find this information useful. If you are in the market for either of these lenses, please consider using our Amazon affiliate links down below. They give us a really small kickback with absolutely no additional cost to you. So we really appreciate it and it helps this channel going and helps me make more videos like this in the future. All right, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really like this video, consider subscribing. We have tons of content on our channel from vlogs to behind the scenes content to some tutorials. I will get to more tutorials, but have a little bit on there for now. Thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you guys next week.